Daniel Crosslink, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're talking about 3D printing news and articles that I found to be interesting in the last four weeks. We're starting with the topic of 3D printed houses. And probably you have heard of this topic already before or you know a project even nearby where you live. I recently got to notice that there is actually two projects in Germany now with 3D printed houses and there is more over the world. This technology gets a lot of media attention in the last couple of months. And I think it's a topic we should talk about because it, it, is, uh, it is there for a few years already. And now it's coming up more often at least and it's gonna get more coverage because it's actually quite interesting topic. So let's talk about it. Um, this is the example from, from Germany that was released uh, in September. There's an article here about it. And it's uh, I don't want to play the video because of copyright issues, but I will show you the article. And it shows that they are currently building this house. And there's also another example in South Germany that is very similar. And if you look at the results, this looks quite unique. This looks interesting because the technology enables you to uh, print something in a very unique shape, uh, especially these round corners look really interesting. And I can imagine that this is particularly interesting for companies who wanna build specific office buildings that look unique and that separate uh, them from the other buildings around. This is probably one of the main reasons I see this for. Uh, residential buildings this is, seems to be an interesting turn like because I the, all the buildings that I've seen before so far at least in Germany the the plans this was all just examples and uh, yeah showcases but this seems to be a real project for a residential building so of course I'm I'm asking myself the question would I want to live in such a house you have to know we are currently living in a house that is 100% except from the basement, of course, um, which is concrete, but everything on top of the base plate, so to say, is made of wood and 100% even the filling between, between the walls is even from wood. So yeah, I'm asking myself, would I want to live in such a house, which is then a concrete house? And in Germany, I mean, in other countries, this might be quite normal to live in a concrete house. Especially in Germany, we have the tradition, uh, at least a lot of the buildings are from red brick, are made from red brick. But concrete houses, especially for residential use cases, are rare. Uh, concrete buildings are more here for office buildings. That's quite common. And the question is, of course, also, what about the ecological footprint of this. Is this in, by any means uh, better in terms of the consumption of energy? Is this better isolated then? I can imagine that they are mixing uh, bubbles into the concrete. So it's actually something that's more of a foamy concrete and not um, without any infill. And so to say it could be better in terms of the isolation than uh, uh, something that is like just in a traditional way built from concrete. And I think this technology has a future. There's also another article here on all 3DP talking about the costs of 3D printed houses. I think there's another factor that's quite interesting to know. How much does it actually cost to build a 3D printed house? Um, there are several examples here. These smaller ones here, for example, they seem to be fairly cheap, um, around $10,000 for such a house, which looks fairly cheap to me. And it's also including the windows and the doors. So it's not just the walls. It's really the overall price for the house. This looks interesting. We have another one here for $4,000, which is even less expensive, but it looks also quite small. I mean, for a 3D printed house, for in general, I think if you would build this from uh, bricks and uh, in a traditional way, it pretty, probably would be more expensive. And there's more examples here in Shanghai, a uh, base company building uh, 10 houses in one day using 3D printing te technology, which is also quite interesting in terms of the speed. Then we have another office building here in Dubai. I think that got already some media coverage, if you remember. Uh, interesting article to read. So I, I am also linking everything that I'm talking about here in the description of the video, of course. Let's talk about the next thing. And I think it's also getting a lot of coverage. Uh, you can imagine what it is. It is the, the belt printer from Creality, the CR 
30. And it gets so much attention uh, from YouTubers currently. I think n there's not a single exception of at least the well-known YouTube channels about 3D printing, except this one here. <laughs> Everyone has tested this printer. And that is that itself is already quite unique because I've never seen this kind of attention level for a printer before, even from channels that usually don't do these kind of reviews, uh, especially CNC Kitchen. I think it for him, it's a pretty unique situation to test this kind of device because usually he does material tests and all kinds of interesting topics around how to use reprinting technology for all kinds of purposes. Also, he reviewed this printer, so this is quite unique. I'm sure I'm gonna show you the, the Kickstarter campaign. It's still running 10 days to go. Interesting thing really is how this printer came into reality. So Naomi Wu is the founder of this project. She partnered up with Creality to make it uh, a reality, which is really cool thing. Then we also don't forget that Scott Laheen, the founder of the Marlin firmware project, he also joined Creality and Naomi to make the firmware for this device which is uh, really cool. And I think this should be the normal thing to do for some printer manufacturers, unfortunately, is not the reality. So there's lots of printers out there where you cannot flash modern firmware tube. And this project is quite unique. But the question is, of course, who is this printer for? Like, what's the what's the actual use case? And you're probably gonna print some of these swords and maybe one of the beams. And that at some point, it's gonna get boring because the actual use case that I see for this device is a mass production of either similar parts or uh, also different parts. Uh, every item that you print can be a different one. That's not really the, the problem here. I think it's more like what is the use case for you and me because I don't have an issue when a print is done to take it off the build plate and then start the next one. Of course, if you want to print something that is really, really long, this is the use case that this belt printer was built for. Who is going to use this in a hobby way and who is going to use this in a professional way? And I think the professionals will be happy about such a printer. Um, there's probably lots of people who are looking exactly for this kind of device. Interestingly uh, enough, there's another one, um, another project at the same time on Kickstarter which looks very similar, the iFactory one, and also the pricing seems to be quite close to the Creality CR30. It's a little bit more expensive, but looking at the specs and looking at the design even, simply it looks very similar, probably because it's also based on the original idea of the belt printer. Uh, it's going back to 2018 when the project started. So they, they started basically all at the same time on the base uh, idea of this uh, belt printer. So these projects are popping up on Kickstarter now. The question is, do you want to buy this? I pledged for the CR30 because I want to test it, but I didn't get any of the beta devices. I would say still this thing is not final. Um, and I actually, I don't want a beta device. I want to have something that is in its final stage and is really ready to use and doesn't have all kinds of issues. So the official date when this should arrive here is around May 2021. So you're probably not going to see a review of this device before spring next year. But I mean, there's lots of other things to talk about. For example, another article that's quite interesting here is on Prusa printers about how to make food grade 3D printed models. Probably a lot of you have already thought about, oh yeah, yeah this looks nice, let's print this uh, little coffee cup or let's print some of these uh, plastic spoon and knife and fork. This looks interesting. Um, maybe we can use it for children or we can use it for picnic or whatever you were thinking. And I think it's particularly important to remember that the materials that you can use for 3D printing, you have to look at the certifications and can they actually be used for food safe printing. The article covers this really in depth and talks about first what materials are usable for food safe printing and next what you need to do to actually make even those materials completely food safe by coding them because every 3D print has little ripples and little gaps where bacteria can settle in and then the, the idea of food safe is completely uh, destroyed um, if, if any of these bacteria can spread and, and uh, develop in, in your print. It also talks about what you should 
uh, modify in terms of uh, the printer, for example, exchanging the nozzle because a brass nozzle, I didn't know that, to be honest, but they talk about the brass nozzles um, having some uh, lead alloy and that means it can cause problems and cause health risks and you should uh, replace the nozzle with a hardened steel one if you really want to make it 100% bulletproof for food safe printing. So there is all kinds of considerations. To be honest, if you are just printing this for yourself, you know what you're doing. Um, when you read the article, you will know what the risk is. And for yourself, if you're just doing this as a, a sample or just for fun for yourself, you know what you're doing. But you should never sell or give a 3D printed object that is clearly for uh, using with food to someone, uh, even a close friend. I wouldn't do this because um, in the end, if something happens, if you're giving this, this risky thing to another person, you're responsible in a, in a way for what's going to happen. And if you don't tell a person what's going to happen or what can happen, uh, you're making yourself, you're putting yourself in a bad position. Now let's quickly talk about the three latest videos that I made on my channel. The first one I want to talk about is the E-Steps video where I was talking about dimensional accuracy. So I think that video covers pretty much the process of how to calibrate your printer steps for X, Y and Z axis. This is uh, one that got some attention here. The other one is uh, talking about calibrating extruder. So uh, calibrating your extruder for extruding the right amount of filament that was released two weeks ago. And then the latest one uh, where I'm talking about the iPhone 12 Pro LiDAR sensor. I was waiting for the iPhone 12 Pro for quite a while. Now it arrived and I made this video. And I think it's it shows pretty much uh, pretty well that the sensor is quite good for 3D scanning larger stuff, but it's not really perfect for something that's small and where you want a lot of detail. So I think it has its its real purpose somewhere in the AR space where you want to map out a room and you want to orient something or you want to place something in a room virtually. Um, these kind of things that is really good for also scanning your environment. But when it comes to detail and to close-up scanning, I think photogrammetry is still the technology to use, uh, which is perfectly suited for that. And you have all kind of flexibility, what you want to use in terms of what camera you want to use, what light you want to use, how close you want to be, what lens you are going to use. You have all kind of control, uh, but with the LiDAR sensor, you take what you get and you have basically no other control over what's going to happen and how much detail you're going to get. So you cannot, you cannot invest more and buy a better camera to get a better result. That's what I'm, I'm saying here. So these three videos were on my channel lately. Then I want to talk about um, three other videos on other channels that I think are particularly interesting. Uh, first one here from Chuck on the Chap channel uh, where he's talking about the um, understanding Creality Ender 3 control board firmware fiasco. And I think this is a topic that didn't get too much attention. He brought it up and I think it's really important that he brought it up because um, you remember my video about that Creality is going to change to 32-bit mainboards on all of their Ender models. That was a while ago. What they did is they did exactly that, but what they did also is they included uh, different mainboards with different stepper motor drivers for all kinds of different printer models. So they didn't just build one of the boards with like the setup and make it for every printer, but they built different versions of the board. And the even worse, they didn't really mark those boards. So you cannot distinguish them. Like visually, you cannot see what kind of board you have and what drivers you have on that board. Just from looking at the surface of the board, you will have to figure it out yourself. And Chuck is talking about it in depth. So I really uh, encourage you to watch his video. Uh, it's really it's really going into the details there. Also teaching tech, um, he did a video on his channel about this topic as well. And I think it's a few weeks ago. So if you're in any way interested in getting a 32-bit board or you wanna buy a new printer from Creality and you're not sure what you get, I think you should watch those videos and, and check out how to really find out what you're getting. If you, um, I mean, this is only relevant for people, of course, who are interested to flash new firmware to those printers. Otherwise, if you just buy the printer and use it as it comes, then uh, you're not in trouble, I guess. 
this next one here, um, I think this video is, is really interesting because it's talking about 3D printing for a living and uh, what a real maker faces in his day-to-day -day job using 3D printers and what considerations go into using that in a professional way for building a business. And when you watch that video, uh, I think the, the particular interesting part is where Miles talks about uh, the reasons and the use cases he uses 3D printing for, uh, which are not exclusive, but he uses also other, the company he has also uses other techniques to uh, to do parts building. And 3D printing is, is additionally used for specific part types. And the other thing that he talks about, printing something from Thingiverse is, is one thing, but for him, the CAD design, the design of the part is the actual business. Like not the 3D printing process, that is just a manufacturing step. But the actual construction of the part, which is a custom part, is the actual business. That's what he gets paid for mainly because that is where all the brain flows into. And that also reminded me to, to mention this because it is important if you, if you by any case want to use this for a business, you need to learn the skill of, of CAD design, of part design. And it's not enough to know how to operate the printer, but because then you're just a printer operator and you know nothing about where the part came from and how it was designed and how it comes together. Uh, and that is the actual skill that is the value, where the real money is. It's not the 3D printing. And I think this, this video really covers that very well. Um, and I really appreciate that kind of video much more than another 3D printer review, to be honest. Uh, another interesting article by CNC Kitchen, uh, specifically more, it's a video where he talks about super soft TPU. Um, super interesting video because that kind of material, there's not too many videos about it in the first place. And I think it's also interesting because it opens up new use cases and uh, he covers that quite well in the video. So another one uh, worth watching. So that's it about videos. You've seen this is a quite new format on this channel. If you like this kind of video covering a little bit about what's going on in the 3D printing world, what's maybe even outside of the hobby space, uh, other videos for other channels. If you like that, give this video a like and also tell me what kind of topics you wanna see in this kind of format. If you have any ideas of interesting articles I should talk about, comment about it. And I will see you next time with another video either about tech or news. So see you soon. Bye bye.